Hello, welcome cultist of the Shining Icosahedron Great Order. This is Acolyte Bobo. With me, such an honor, we have the High Priestess Mara and our great guest, Cynthia Marie. Hi, Hi. Cynthia. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys? Thank you so much. We're excited to have you here. Yeah. Again, right. such an honor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if there's anyone that I doubt it, but if there's anyone in the chat watching us right now that don't know who she is, she is um, mainly known as Nelly G from LA by Night, if I'm not mistaken, but she is so many characters and activities more. <laughs> so that's why she's here to get to know her, any questions that you guys have and everything that you would like to share with us. First of all, to know a little bit of your background. Where do you live? Where are you from? Um, well, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, um, but my parents are from New York and my grandparents are from Puerto Rico. So I'm third generation Ooh. Puerto Rican. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. Yeah. And um, I know you do like the, the RPG and the streams and all that, but besides that, what do you do like in your day-to-day -day life for a living? Um, so for a living, I'm actually just an engineer, um, systems engineering just. for some company. Yeah, it's it's whatever. Um, it's a fun <laughs> job. I really love doing it. But like, you know, it's it's cool. I got my degree in dance, though. So I've always been mm. a dancer and performer like all of my life. Um, I did stage combat for just a little bit. Um, just a, you know, a few things that I, I've done in my life, but I'm mostly a performer and, you know, an engineer. We won't talk about that. Don't need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no need to mention, just a little bit curious. <laughs> That's amazing, by the way, that you, you do so many things. Thank so you. when we were chatting about the invitation for the interview and everything, you did mention the dance. So I understand that's a very important part of you. Yes. yes. How did I've... you... How'd I start? Long. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, according to my mom, I um, came dancing out of the womb. I've been dancing since I was two years old. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I graduated from an arts um, high school with um, my emphasis in dance. And then I got my associate's degree in social science because I didn't know if I wanted to be a dancer. And then I went to um, a prominent art school out in Los Angeles called California Institute of the Art or CalArts. Um, it's actually owned by Disney. So like a oh, lot wow. of the, yeah, a lot of the animators that you see going to Disney, a lot of them graduated from my school, oh, but I went to the dance school. So not a whole lot of dancers <laughs> are known for the Disney aspect, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I graduated with my BFA in dance and choreography. Um, so I've just been dancing all of my life. I've studied all sorts of different um, genres. I guess my favorite would probably be a little bit of like hip hop um, and modern dance, but I've done ballet, flamenco. Um, I've done Mexican folklorico. I've done, um, wow. yeah, I've done Filipino. I've done African, Afro-Brazilian. Um, I was a professional uh, belly dancer for some time. So I've like, I've, I've done it all. I appreciate dance. I can't just choose one. I think they're all amazing. <laughs> like I had so much fun just doing everything and anything. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I've noticed that you really like it. You post constantly or you, it's something that we can find on your social constantly. Yeah, yeah. I, we are going to jump in into the RPG world, but just a little bit curious. Have you ever combined both hobbies or, or things like the dancing and the RPG? So it's um, interesting that you say that. Um, I am also on New York by Night season two, if anyone has seen it. Um, if not, I know someone here who hasn't seen it yet, so <laughs> no spoilers. Um, but I do try to fuse a lot of my characters um, with the ability to dance because somehow it always kind of comes up. And there is a moment in New York by Night that you actually see me do a little bit of dancing while sitting down. So you guys can have fun there. Um, but okay. as far, yeah, as far as combining the two, it's usually most of my characters have an aspect of dance to them because I'm fairly well-rounded, well -rounded, educated like, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard not to. And honestly with, with Nelly at first, like I didn't mean for her to be a dancer. Like she was like, you know, fashionista. She ran her, her, um, her line and everything, but there was a moment when we were in the club and I had to get out. So I, I, hip-hop dancer I know whacking so I was just like all right we're gonna vogue out of this situation now <laughs> like so we had to build stats in my sheet that had that <laughs> <laughs> oh 
but that's yeah it makes sense we all combine what we are what we like on our characters mm -hmm. and i'm sorry mara how do you start in with rpg games how did i start with rpg games geez uh well in college um the arts college that I was at, I had a couple of theater friends who invited me over to their house and they're like, hey, we play this like game that we get to be fairies and elves and, and like, you, you know, you're welcome to join us. And I was like, you had me at elf. I will be there. What do I need? Um, <laughs> so I went to our local <laughs> gaming shop because they're like, you need uh, 10, what is it? No, 12 10 sided dice. I was like, okay, like I thought like dice came in six sides, but all right. <laughs> um, so I go to the local comic book shop and I was like, hey, um, I need 10 sided dice. And they're like, uh, you can look in that crystal like, you know, vase that we have. And they had this one vase and it was like full of a bunch of different dice. And I had to like sit there for like an hour, like picking out like... <laughs> for the, like, the faces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cause like at the time when I started gaming, um, like gaming wasn't what it is today. So like trying to find dice in any color and any sort of format was really <laughs> difficult. Gosh, that yeah. was like almost like 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, but the game that I started with was Changeling. So my friends got me into playing Changeling, the dreaming. Um, and I was playing an issue and had a ball for three and a half years and then kind of slowly got sucked into vampire um, because I was I was in a documentary slash Kickstarter video for By Night Studios um, where I came as a vampire on the Queen Mary and basically there was just like just come in a business suit like you don't really need to know anything just just dress business and everybody knew that I worked a corporate job you know so I was like okay mm -hmm. cool like so I put on my suit and whatever and little did I know that I was going to be <laughs> playing vampire the rest of my life <laughs> So that is, uh, we could say that is your favorite system. Uh, yes, I would. I would say <laughs> it is definitely on my top five favorite systems. Oh, okay. So top yeah. five. Top Can five, we know yes. the other four? Um, I, I mean, Changeling has always been a love of mine. Um, I keep asking and asking, are we ever going to get like an update to Changeling? And <laughs> the the answer is no. It's always no. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I also really love um, Kids on Brooms. Uh, just because I love the uh, magical aspect and also a really easy game to get into. Um, Tales from the Flood, uh, because that was the first one of the first games that I actually um, story tell or DM'd for. Um, how many was that? One, two, three. Uh, Delta Green um, it has been a new favorite of mine. Um, Call of Cthulhu is fun, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of HP Lovecraft himself. Um, but the system and the folks behind creating the system are amazing. Chaosium, shout out. Um, yeah, those are a lot, like, I love D and D as well. Um, uh, but there are so many other really awesome systems out there that just give you, um, a different flavor for things. And sometimes are a little bit easier to understand. Yeah. So it's more in a modernish context, what you play or what mm -hmm. you prefer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, that's cool. You yeah. mentioned that you narrated that you GM. So, I mean, of course you are mostly a player that's what we've seen <laughs> yep but you have been a dm what is do you like that do I, uh um it depends if i um if i have a connection to the the story um so i was writing a specific story for a D, &D campaign that i was running for a little bit and i like really really enjoyed that aspect um i also ran a game of changeling for a charity event um, last october to raise money for um for puerto rico um mm -hmm. when they had the hurricane so that was my first time actually coming out on live stream um mm -hmm. gming and apparently i picked the hardest <laughs> system to <laughs> run ever um, but i just i really just enjoy um narrating a, a story that I had in my head. Um, so it's not necessarily like, I don't like being the like consummate GM. Um, if I have a particular idea that I want to run, then I'm going to go for it. That makes sense. And actually speaking of particular ideas, we have our first question in the chat. Yay. Okay. Uh, Lusumbra wants to know, do you have a story for any character that you have been wanting to play, but due to any reason you haven't been able to do so? 
Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you. I think I have played just about every trope that I can come up with in my head. And I've been playing iteration after the iteration after iteration of it. Um, so right now, what I really enjoy doing, especially if there's one shot, is actually just talking to the storyteller and being like, what is it that you want to see in this story? And then applying that to the character, because like, I'm only so creative. <laughs> And I could like I could throw my different flavors in there, uh, but I think I feel like I've played a lot of the type of characters that I've always wanted to play. All right, well, we have another question in this chat. Uh, someone wants to know if you are uh, Latina, <laughs> uh, because Puerto Rico was just perfectly pronounced it. Pronounced. <laughs> yes, yo soy Puerto Rican, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very much so yeah third generation my uh my grandmother my grandparents came over um from the island um many many moons ago um and then my parent my parents are new Yorkans, um so they were brought up in the bronx uh, um like jenny from the block sort of situation and then my dad got a job out here in los angeles which moved us here so i'm a cali rican not a new Yorkan, but a cali one <laughs> yeah. but I never learned like I, I hate to say it like this but I never really fully learned Spanish mostly because um my family would speak one way and my Spanish teachers would speak another and like going through school, yeah. grade school like everybody was just changing the way they said things and I was just like I can't I speak better French than I do Spanish because oh, wow. of because of ballet <laughs> Oh, oh, right. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to know how to respond to whatever instructions. <laughs> All right. And you also do cosplay and cosplaying goes perfectly along with RPG because yep. you can make great things. How did you get into that? What was first? Cosplay Co RPG? Cosplay. Cosplay was first. Okay. Um, Cosplay... Was it first? Let me, I'm trying to think. It was all kind of around the same time, but I think cosplay for me took off first before TTRPG because TTRPG was like more of my private, like hanging out with my friends versus like making it a thing. Mm -hmm. And then cosplay, my first cosplay, I was part of a group called Gotham Public Works and I found okay. them online. Um, they were the first cosplay group I had ever heard of. In fact, they were the ones who introduced me to what cosplay was. Um, mm -hmm. And I uh, dressed up as Batman characters, both villain and heroes. And at the time, I wanted to audition or come in as Talia al Ghul. If anybody knows anything about the Batman comics, she's Ray al Ghul's uh, daughter. She's kind of like an immortal. She ends up getting married to um, Batman and Damien um, Robin, also known as Damien Wayne. That's her son. Anybody wanted to know? Um, <laughs> I, I say that. Well, I say that because I believe the new Batman that is starting to come out um, that they're all talking about like how they're gonna like what Robin's gonna be there. And I believe it's supposed to be Damien who comes out. So I bring that up because I don't think they're gonna talk about Talia, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh one of my friend, well now dear friend, she responded, her name is um Tara Strand. She is a Harley Quinn of Gotham Public Works and the founder of the group. She was like, We're not accepting that, but how did you feel about playing Huntress? So I started reading about Huntress and little did I know that I like really connected with um Helena Bertinelli. She was really, really awesome. Um, so we started building the costume for that. And my first Comic-Con was in 2008, I believe. And it was the first time that I ever walked a comic uh, floor. First time I ever got on TV on G4. I was interviewed Ooh. for my first time um, <laughs> and came out with the costume. And it was a hit. That's the first time I ever met Talis and Jaffe, if anybody knows who Talison is. Um, if you don't, he's, uh, he's somebody on Critical Role, if you watch Critical Role. Um, but anyway, he became a friend of mine and he tried to get me to voiceover work. And I'm like, nah, dude, like, I'm just going to keep working as an engineer. It's fine. I don't want to, I don't want to, I, that voiceover stuff doesn't really do a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Why was I wrong? <laughs> yeah. So then I started cosplaying a whole bunch of other characters outside of Huntress and my favorite being Wonder Woman and Wonder Girl. Um, I love DC comics. I did mostly DC, um, cosplay stuff. We have another question in the chat. Sure. What will you say is the biggest obstacle for for people who want to start playing RPGs? Any advice to bring in a character idea to life and doing it justice? Ah, 
Okay, so I'm going to be very specific on how that that is answered. RPG, how is it difficult to start? No, pick up a book, find a couple of friends who have an imagination just like you and schedule a time where you want to go hang out with each other and be safe. Um, and whoever loves to uh, tell stories, have them be the GM and go for it. I think that that is like the that's what my college friends and I did. We all wanted to hang out. We wanted to do something outside of just sitting around a table and staring at each other or playing a video game. <laughs> Um, so one of my friends was like, oh, well, I used to run games. So they did. And we started playing together like three or four years into the story. So, yeah, it's just whatever kind of floats your friend's fancy. Like there's so many books out there now that, you you know, you can play sci-fi, you can play pirates, you can play ninjas, you can play whatever you want. Like it's some, there is something out there for you to play, which I think is incredible and, and beautiful testament to the RPG community um, in terms of bringing a character to life. There are so many different ways to do it. Um, the best way for me, I usually try to pick something um, that I identify with, with the character. So it grounds it in reality. So like I talk about adding dance elements to my characters so that I often have something to, to talk about um, when the time comes. So I usually try to like put a little, a little flavor of me in it all the time. I think that's a great advice. It, it yeah. does help to, to feel more natural when playing. <laughs> I will caution, though, try not to build your exact self in the game because things can happen. There are consequences that happen in the game and you True. may experience bleed. We all know about what bleed is. And I have seen uh, people who have built their exact self and then their character gets killed and they're like, ah, like, oh, no, and start really freaking out about it. So try not to build yourself too, too much, but ground it in the reality of adding elements of yourself to it. That's a very good tip. You're completely yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, let me see, I lost it. There you go. What is the most precious lesson you have thanks to RPGs? Oh, precious <laughs> lesson. Protect my mental health, protect myself. Um, there are things that happen in your RPG games that may affect you in ways that you may not ever realize why it affected you in a way. And if you're cognizant that it is not the player or not the ST out to get you because it is a safe place and understanding that when you feel these feelings to like write them down or vocalize it, um, you're able to come out safer and feel better about situations. Um, and I usually bring it to my therapist when I feel something is really, really off. I don't necessarily blame anybody at the table that I ever play with. It's just more of like, oh, I recognize that brought up a feeling in me. I need to go talk about that and find out why so that I can better protect myself next time when I'm playing a game. So that that's kind of what I've really come away with with RPGs is really learning how to um, protect my mind and my mental health. Yeah, and I guess that combined with your other answer that you put part of you, who you are, or what you like on your characters, mm -hmm. that's a very good way to explore exactly yep. what you're saying, like yep. what affects you, what moves you. Mm-hmm. All right, there you have it, guys. Um, we have another question from Was Already Take It, one of our uh, main and constant followers. Yeah. <laughs> He's asking, um, okay, I'm going to read his question, how it is, and then if you want, I can change it. <laughs> ¿Cómo es being a woman in that level of recognition, famous in the top TTRPG games? So let me see if I can try See if I can translate. What is it like being one of the top women in TTRPG games? Is that yeah? I translate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna point in translation. <laughs> <laughs> My character sheet's leveling up. Um, <laughs> can I let you in a secret? I don't recognize myself as one of the top like top women of TTRPG. I really don't. <laughs> I just I'm a nerd who really loves playing games and feels so fortunate when people invite me to go play with them because that that means to me that they feel safe with me or want to play with me because they think that I'm creative. I don't I don't pretend to think that I'm like some top tier gamer because like we're all nerds. We all want to play with each other. So um, what it's like is just it's an honor to an honor and a privilege to be asked back to tables and to be able to share creative stories with others. He mentioned that uh, it's such an honor for us to uh, 
yeah, and, and a dream for us because uh, for this part of the continent, uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, find places to play role games and RPG games. So I think she, he, sorry, is talking about that. Uh, talking about maybe for you it's normal to have a entire show and streaming uh, playing a vampire and for us as we say as uh, the first part of the program uh, at, at the interview sorry uh, it's uh, it's just a dream that we are going uh, building I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, to be represented, to be represented in the TTRPG community, um, and having Latin America like actually like be explored as a as a beautiful place, especially within TTRPGs. Like I really try to bring my heritage as best as possible to all the games that I do, so that we are represented. Um, because oftentimes, like there's there's not any of us in in the community but that's, that's changing true. there are many of us you just got to go find them and um i have that is another lesson that i have learned is that when you when you ask for something especially out in the social medias you will receive yeah. um so i have asked for uh latin content creator content creators so that i can go follow and support them and it's been a wild ride to meet so many different people um yeah, yeah i think it's beautiful i just hope that maybe one day um and it's already starting that we start to see stories about our community as well. Um, I think we are already starting to see um, that expand. Um, you certainly are starting to see it in uh, media already with Encanto and uh, yeah. Black Panther, yeah. Um, yeah. right? Um, but I hope that media starts to look at other cultures besides the ones that we constantly see um, to build more of a fruitful story. Um, because I think every country has beautiful stories to tell and they're worth listening to. I completely agree. And <clears throat> sorry, that is one of the reasons or yeah, one of the reasons why we are so excited to have you here. I know mm -hmm. and I can imagine that being there in the spotlight where you are, since you enjoy it, you don't feel like you are what you mentioned you don't feel that big but for us you are someone to look up to and well there was a big reaction in the chat about that <laughs> <laughs> saying how we all love you and admire you and and that you are amazing and great and you are a rpg star that's you for sure cry. <laughs> <laughs> we sent you a big hug <laughs> before we make you cry I have another question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, wait, give me just one second. I can read this because those names, I don't know them. Um, I think this question is for from when you were mentioning the characters of the comics. Okay. I um, it is Talisin. You mean Percival Fredrickson von Balsall? Oh, I think they're talking about maybe Tal one of Taliesin's characters, Taliesin Jaffe from Critical Role. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't sure about that question. <laughs> I'm the same as you. <laughs> the same though. Uh, if you want, you can send a question in Spanish and Fobo and I. Well, Fobo, it's an ex excellent translated, but I, I can do my best effort for translate to Cynthia Marie. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <coughs> Chicos que están en el chat, si cualquiera de ustedes quiere enviar sus preguntas en español, las traducimos, no hay ningún problema, y después les pasamos la respuesta. Uh, so, I is... interrupt. Uh, someone in the chat is saying that the translation is off. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, no. There, can you fix that, please? Yes, please. We we do have, like, a program that is trying to translate what we're saying, so let's uh, wait a little bit until they come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where were we? Right, cosplaying, RPGs. Um, so how did you enter to stream live those games? Um, well, I started playing um, some D&D &D games on a couple of other channels um, that were D&D &D official. Um, so that was kind of my starter into it. And then um, I became... I became longtime friends with somebody who's also in the chat, um, and he, you guys know him very well. His name's Jason Carl. 
Uh, we met on that Kickstarter that uh, I talked about where I dressed up in a suit and oh, uh, Jason was the one who actually told me about vampire because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, so he and I, he and I spent a few hours and he was teaching me about it. And um, he was the one who really helped me jumpstart into, into live stream. So once I started doing the stuff with the D and D, the opportunity for LA by night came up and um, he asked me to be involved and I absolutely would follow him to the ends of the world because he's an incredible person and incredible storyteller. So of course I had to jump at the opportunity um, to be in LA by night. So that's kind of where it all kind of started was that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Makes sense. That's, that's again what you mentioned an amazing yeah. opportunity i am curious if you want to tell us about or details about that how did you select that character or or was it like a group decision i would love to talk about this this is my one of my favorite <laughs> <Question>. stories <laughs> so once we were all cast, um, and I, I'm sure that you guys are all very familiar with the book, um, but it usually talks about doing your character creation kind of all together so you could do like the storyboard mapping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I walked in with an idea that I wanted to play a Tremere. I was already uh, doing a vampire LARP. I was playing a Toreador, um, and it was very close to myself as a Toreador. So I was just like, okay, cool. Like I want to try something different. I want to be like that magic girl, like that magic user, like, but the ideas weren't coalescing as best as I like wanted them to. Like they were just, it just wasn't gelling. And then seeing what everybody else was playing, it just like the stories weren't kind of connecting at least with the, my particular character. Um, and it was about a week before we were supposed to start shooting. And um, we went to an escape room and we played this escape room. It was so much fun. It was like team building, oh. 101. It was great. Wow. Uh, and Jason and I started talking and he was, <laughs> I love it so much. He was like, look, as much as we want to do the the Tremere, like I, I he's like, I understand where you want to go. He goes, but you got, you should probably cl play closer to the heart. And I was like, oh. Oh all right that's fine fine and within 15 <laughs> minutes and i kid you not like 15 to 30 minutes we whipped together melly g um and i say it like that because when your character comes together so easily you know that that's the that's the character you should be playing versus it took me almost like two and a half three weeks to try to get this tremere sort of character together and yeah. it just never it just never wasn't pulling together um Flash forward several years later, I do get to play my Tremere, by the way. Like, so don't think oh, that I don't get okay. to play her. Yeah, um, I play her in Miami by night. Um, and that was a lot of fun to play a Tremere. But that Nelly G came together like super duper quick and went to go play her on the on the first day. And it was like magic. Well, she, of course, heard the, the advice. And now it's the advice that she's giving us. Like, do it mm -hmm. close to you. Yeah. <laughs> Give me just one second. We have two questions. So I think I lost in the chat. Um, Great. I think the first one is other than your own, do you have a favorite podcast live play stream? Favorite podcast live play stream. That's a lot of words. Uh, podcast. <laughs> um, I don't listen to a lot of live play, but when I do, they're actually playing right now. The Gax Pack is so much fun to listen to. Um, they are ran that one okay so they're ran by jason charles miller um they're playing right now but they play on every sunday oh, okay. um and there's a lot of wonderful players on there including my good friend vivid vivka um check them out because they're they're just like really animated and, and fun to to listen to um otherwise i usually tune into anything on the initiative order their stuff is also a whole tons of fun to listen to um but honestly i just i don't have a lot of time in my day to be listening to it too much but when i do <laughs> on my drives like from work and back i'll probably throw one of those channels on all right well there you go guys if you want to to listen to those um let me see if i understand correctly the next question so the actual question is, what knowledge do you have about the vampire, uh, the masquerade communities in Latin America? I guess uh, because in the interviews we found that D and D and vampire are the big ones, the most played mm -hmm. systems. So mm -hmm. do you know anything about that? The the vampire communities. 
down here? I know that they're big. Uh, I know that they're very supportive and awesome. I have not been able to interact as much as I would like to. I think mostly because of my language barrier and I really would love to fix that one of these days. <laughs> um, but no, I know that they're they're pretty big and dominant over in, in definitely South America. I've heard a lot. So yeah, I know they exist and I want to be a part of it more. I just, I gotta, I gotta get over my fear of speaking very bad Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that won't be a problem. I mean, we completely understand and we are <laughs> trying precisely to break those barriers, like trying to show that it doesn't really matter that, yes, it might be slower. Yes, it might not be as uh, clear as communicating in your own language, but that we have something bigger than unites us that's the love of RPGs. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Um, I think I lost. Okay, so I'm not sure if this question was for you or for everyone i see in the chat they are already answering but also for you if you have anything to say about that um do you think that it's possible to create more shows like box machina from other games other shows systems people i would like to think in an ideal world yes <laughs> it would be because we have beautiful stories to tell yes. <laughs> um that being said business is business um That's and true. it all it all depends on who is willing to to pick up the stories that we want to tell and run with it but i'm sure we'll see stuff soon yeah i'm sure we will it's it's what you mentioned before maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago that we started playing, it wasn't so easy, but now it's becoming more popular and easier to I access. mean, we, we finally broke through the Marvel wall. Like, Hispanics are finally being represented. Like, we yeah. may have been the villain. I'm not entirely <laughs> happy about that, but at least we were not the um, the, the typical trope of a Hispanic villain. We were <laughs> yeah. we were also, like, they were kick butt in the, sh in the movie, if you haven't seen it. Um, very, very proud for our culture, and I hope to see much, much more from from that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, how Lusumbra wants to know how do you come up with the outfit ideas for your characters? Which one has been the hardest to put together? Oh man, um, I don't <laughs> think any of them were hard. I think the challenge was specifically with Nelly. <laughs> um first off I love fashion I have a huge closet you can't tell because I'm in my parents house right now but <laughs> like I have a huge closet at home because I just I adore fashion period but when it came to Nelly I really really was hard of on not repeating outfits as much as possible uh because she's a fashionista she owns her own like her own fashion line so yeah um, have never really repeating outfits was kind of a, a challenge of mine. I think that's probably, that was probably the hardest thing, um, to do, but outside of that, like, I just love costuming and love fashion. So it just kind of came naturally. I always kind of know what to put on the characters. When I switched to Coco, um, the challenge there was to be a little bit more demure with the outfit. So where mm -hmm. Nelly was very flashy and rhinestones mm -hmm. and glitter, uh, Coco was very subdued, um, very particular and meticulous about how she was going to dress. Everything was still beautiful and 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 clean and stuff like that, but um, a little bit more understated was how I dressed Coco. Yeah, hey, th that's true, and it's a very good question. You do have very different styles on your characters. That that's amazing. <laughs> I do my best to try to give you guys a range and spectrum of things. <laughs> <laughs> And do you have, I mean, I know sometimes we don't have the time, but do you have games that are not being streamed like more uh, with your friends, more closed? Oh, yeah. Or... Uh, oh, yeah. I play private games all the time. I, I like <laughs> I, I would lose my mind if I didn't do that. Um, I'm actually playing an AD and d game um, with some of my LARP friends um, and my sister. So that's been a ton of fun to to play. They play they play weekly. They started in the pandemic at 2020, um, and I just recently started for other reasons. I just wanted to jump in and play. Yeah. So D and D. We've been having a lot of fun. I play um, my first time ever playing a rogue. Um, so I'm a rogue swashbuckler, artificer, artillerist. So she's like this whole like wow. pirate cannoneer <laughs> genre who like has a charisma, very high charisma stat and flirts with just everybody. 
<laughs> that that's weird combination, but I like how it sounds. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of words to say that she is a very sneaky pirate who likes to like shoot things. <laughs> challenging us. Find your outfits. <laughs> exactly. That's true. So we usually like to uh, ask if you want, and I will assume you you want, <laughs> if you have any like your favorite story, like your favorite character, something yes, please. <laughs> that, that makes you laugh every time you remember. Makes me laugh every time I remember. I play a lot of serious games, so it's hard to, to remember to <laughs> laugh at certain things. Or uh, makes you cry every time you remember. No, one of your stories that you like. Maybe yeah. of those like with your friends sessions. Yeah. So um I will talk about, I believe it was season two, LA by night. Um, I call it the scream that was heard around the world. <laughs> um, but it was I had been away from um, I think for an episode, and they brought my character back. Nellie was trapped in, I believe it was the abandoned church, and she had um been um basically like she got hit with the the wood through her and the um the wood coming out and the scream like I said that was heard around the world um so prepping for that that was a very interesting um moment for me because while everybody was um on screen playing their characters I was off screen next to like the sound editors and like the live editors and stuff like that and I was sitting in the chair trying to get myself to to cry and understand like try to get the tears to come down so I was thinking about like this is really weird, but my relationship with my sister, because I love my sister so much that it wasn't necessarily tears of sadness, but tears of like happiness. And I just kept crying over like how much I loved my sister. So by the time I got onto screen um, and the whole scene was about my sister being taken away anyways. Mm -hmm. So when the scream came out, like I had warned the, the sound engineer that I screamed very, very loudly. So to be ready to like turn the volume down, but like I felt so emotional that the scream could barely come out. So that's why you got this like weird, like ramped up um, scream. And when I got off, um, got off stage for that, I was just like, Whoop. that was like one of the like best scenes I feel like I've ever like activated. Like, that, was, that was good stuff. Um, but that was a scene that I like forever remember because I had to prep really hard for that on the side while everybody else was talking about Nelly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you, it's, I believe you, you really bring part of your life to that. It's, it's amazing. It's something hard that not everyone is um, willing to do because it puts you in a vulnerable place. And I believe it's very brave to do it. Thank you. Um, besides everyone being so amazed on not repeating outfits that I do agree is a challenge, they want to know, because you mentioned that uh, Torador feels closer mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Now, on D and D, what race or class do you think you are in real life? Oh man, I have this discussion all the time. Okay, <laughs> let's see here. What race? Um, that one's tough for me. I, I usually talk. Well, no, I take that back. No, no, I'm definitely a fire genasi, like through and through. Like, I, like that. <laughs> I am a genasi. Maybe water or fire. I can't tell. So depends on my day. Um, <laughs> both and, and then as far as class I started off as a um as a bard as you know with my background yeah um and I feel like I made a pact with somebody because I needed help financially so I became a warlock and because of that pact I also acquired artificial skills because <laughs> I'm an engineer <laughs> <laughs> I triple class in life <laughs> well the title of that is multi-class and that has to be more than two so we are really multi-classing in life i am <laughs> yeah i know we mentioned not to talk about it i just will mention it a little bit do you ever combine besides this this mention do you ever combine the engineering with rpgs or performing um the only time i do that is when i'm playing an artificer <laughs> yeah, or I, you know, I did play. Um, my friend Ryan Omega came up with. Um, I forgot what the game content was, but basically, it the show was called Boardroom Angels, and we all played, um, angels, trying to basically discuss the apocalypse that was happening. Okay. And um, I 
was playing an angel and I don't know what possessed me to do this, but I started talking about um, process Bibles. So I'm a process engineer where I deal with, um, with developing processes for folk. And so I just thought it was funny that I like would yell at people for not following the process. And I like, <laughs> I had a, this is the first time I started like really experimenting with voices. Um, so I like, use the line. I was like, I really don't understand why people think that like, you know, it's okay to like, just pray in front of the toilet. Like that is not the way to get through the pearly gates. Um, so like, it's not the <laughs> process, you know, so I, I, everybody was cracking up when I started doing that. So that's kind of how I started using a little bit of my, my work in some of the TTRPGs. But other than that, it doesn't really come up too much. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different, but makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, since you've mentioned that you do know a little bit Spanish, have you ever played live streaming or with your friends or family in Spanish? Have you ever tried to to do RPG in Spanish? So if you watch a little bit of New York by night, um, Coco, I take on um, more of my of our Latin culture. Um, so, ah, oh gosh, I don't know if I want to do spoilers here, um, but there is some Spanish involved. Jason and I kind of go back and forth a little bit, a little bit, un poquito, um, <laughs> in Spanish. Um, but oh. I, I do use a different accent to indicate when Coco is speaking in Spanish versus not speaking in Spanish. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's I'm amazing. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so you... Uh, and I understand, of course, I understand that it's a very important part of your process. You've mentioned several times the community and how it is not always represented. And if it is, it's not well represented. Uh, how is that part of, of your life combined with being well live and a lot of people watching you and doing so many things that you do? Um, I think the biggest thing, I guess, for me is just trying to bring awareness to the fact that we're not as represented as we one would want. Um, and it, it, that's why, like, again, like I try to bring my heritage as best as possible. And if I don't feel that my heritage necessarily um, melds with the storyline, I at least try to, at the very minimum, have a Spanish name so that folks recognize that, oh, this person is of um, Latin or Hispanic um, culture and that they they do exist in this world yeah so I do I just I try my best to bring an element something to to show that we do exist and we all appreciate it <laughs> yeah. yeah no problem <laughs> so okay so I, I gotta tell you something that's like interesting and funny so I'm getting ready to do another show Power Rangers and we are developing our Power Rangers and I'm really excited for it um and some of the ideas that we're throwing around like everyone's trying to figure out like what zords to to play um I don't know how many people know Power Rangers or zords or whatever but usually you pick like dinosaurs or mythological creatures or whatever so we're kind mm -hmm. of doing like legendary creatures and Ooh. everybody's like picking stuff from kind of like their culture and so of course i'm like diving down being like okay what puerto rican like mythical cult like thing and i'm playing the pink power ranger so pink power ranger is known for having like agile zords so anything that flies so i'm like okay what in puerto rico is like a mythological bird and i can't find anything and i'm like okay all right, any Latin culture that's a mythological bird. <laughs> and all the stuff that I'm coming up with is a beautiful Mexican folkloric um, creatures. And then like, I have a hard time pronouncing them and I'm Hispanic and I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can do this to my GM, like give them a really, like, what, I'm gonna butcher this and please help like correct me on it. Um, Cuatocolo? It's hard, it's really hard. It's, it starts with an X. If anybody can help me with that one. Um, but it's a mythological like bird creature. Oh, um, like a bird and a dragon. It almost looks like birth and a it's dragon. Ex. I just it's remember Greekan or no, uh, Quetzalcoatl. No, maybe, maybe that's like the uh, yeah, feather yeah, yeah. snake. Feather snake. That yeah. one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Please say it again. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl. 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 
Okay, I think one. That's all. But so I I, if I'm ha- if I'm having I have a hard to time, it. <laughs> if I'm having a hard time, I was like, I can't put my GM through that. <laughs> yeah, that. So might I'm be having really hard. I'm having a tough time. So chat if you know of any legendary mythological <laughs> creatures in the Latin hemisphere or anything that's easy to pronounce. Let <laughs> me know, please. That would help me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe That's, it was like it's all you you're talking about uh i don't know how 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 was it, the, the this creature <laughs> no you got you you're the yeah the one that i was trying to think of was the one that you said is a, a ah, feather okay, okay. Yeah, a serpent type looking yeah ah excellent yeah yes but again so, if anybody knows of any of these creatures <laughs> let me know <laughs> yeah. chat if you have any ideas you can participate in her character they are actually mentioning that um it is hard to pronounce might be difficult for your dm but the quetzal would be a beautiful sword that's general opinion <laughs> well then and you know I what agree. i i think that's going to be my sword <laughs> yeah. just, we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to learn how to say it right just like everybody else <laughs> that, that's true that, that's true <laughs> so it's cool. pink quetzal <clears throat> yes quetzal nice that that yeah. sounds amazing that's it that's it that that that's cool you guys just well, thank you the, because i've been struggling yeah. with that part <laughs> i think quetzal it's the spanishization of the uh now what version I, i don't know how i don't know how to say this but the ori- the word in now what it's like Quetzcatl. Quet, yeah, I'm not gonna something like that. But <laughs> it's, all, it's okay. <laughs> I'm the, oh man, like if I w- if we weren't live, I would try to I would try to do it. I don't want to make a fool of myself right now. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. Actually, the chat is helping. Uh, for Heather, he is the creator of the games in our studio. That maybe someday we can show you. <laughs> yes, and he is uh, advising that. You might think of it as K E T S A L. So get sal. I actually see it and I'm going to oh, screenshot perfect. that so <laughs> that I remember how to say that. So thank you. <laughs> Yay. And yes, Lexan, it's right. The uh, kids will have a long feather that can be a good sword. And it's a beautiful feather, actually. Yeah. Very yeah, colorful. It's gonna look wow. cool. This is very exciting. The chat is going crazy with this idea. <laughs> We, I want to, I want to see that, Cynthia. Yes, well, it's, we're going to be playing in, to, in April. You have to Ooh. choose a very beautiful outfit. I will, I will do my best. I will do my best. So far, the only thing on the docket is wearing pink. So I'll be wearing lots of pink during it. Nice. There's this shade that's called Mexican pink. So at least how, that's how we call it. I don't know if that's international now that I think about it. Like I didn't know that. I'm going to have to go find this color of pink now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You mentioned something that I'm very curious about. That's actually something that I really like. I've never done it. And I always ask the people in our interviews if they do it because I really like it. You do LARPing. I do. <sighs> How did you start with that? And what do you do? I blame Jason again. <laughs> <laughs> um, is he still in the chat he might not still be in the chat I blame Jason again honestly so the day that I learned about the kickstarter the kickstarter was actually to do um, a vampire larp on the queen mary um and so yeah Jason has talked me through larp and like what that was like unfortunately due to um a business conflict I couldn't go to the queen mary uh, vampire <laughs> larp Um, but I was told that the next LARP was going to be in Las Vegas and I made the Las Vegas one. And I will say for a fact, I am spoiled when it comes to LARPs. Like nothing will beat that LARP because it was my first ever LARP. It was the most incredible LARP. And if you could imagine being dressed in an all black gown, I was playing La Sombra. So that's my, my love clan is, is La Sombra. Uh, I'm a La Sombra Toreador, if you couldn't Ooh, tell. Okay. Yeah. Um, but dressed in all black, um, I had like really dark purple lipstick on, I was drinking a glass of red wine. And as the whole scene opens up, 
the roof to the club and we were on the top floor of the palms the roof of the club basically opens up to seeing the night sky and that was like the beginning of how the LARP started and I was like oh my god this is like and everybody was so in character it like just felt like walking into a movie and and playing um and so apparently I wound up with one of the items that one of the clans was looking for and because I was just sitting like I was sitting in a dark corner very La Sombra like I guess I again I had no <laughs> idea right dark corner <laughs> dressed in all black apparently it took players about 45 minutes to an hour just to find me because they had no idea where I was at and they're like, you literally use Cloak of Shadows, like, without knowing it. <laughs> uh, I had the best time playing that LARP that um, kind of spurred me up to to doing other LARPs. And then in Sa um, Southern California, we have a fantasy LARP called Twin Mask. And um, I started there maybe about five years ago. Um and that one was my first time doing a buffer LARP, which is uh, you're using weapons. It's a lightest touch system. So you're kind of basically like playing tag with the weapon. You're not really like hitting somebody really hard. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a ton of fun for me because I'm a former stunt fighter. Um, so I did a lot of sword work. So being able to willingly tap somebody with a weapon um, was a lot of appeal to me. So I, uh, mm -hmm. my characters fight with a spear because boys, boys tend to hit harder than girls. So I was like, all right, like I'm going to use something like to push you away. So like, I don't get hit as hard, you know? Yeah. Um, so I did that for about three or four years and I was on staff for twin mask. Um, and then from mm -hmm. there, just kind of like spun out and done a, did a whole bunch of LARPs and then TTRPG streaming kind of picked up. So I was, wasn't able to play as much LARP as I really wanted to. But let me see if I am understanding. You have played as a player in the LARP and also as the staff in mm -hmm. LARP? Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow, that's cool. amazing to be in both sides. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was real hard. In fact, the, the way I got broken into being a GM was when I was on staff, um, I think I did one year's worth of in player like in character like on site in person work and then the pandemic hit and I had to take all of the stories that I was going to be telling in person and apply it to tabletop um so I got to kind of make my own rules with the with the tabletop stuff and um uh, I had a lot of fun playing with um like smaller groups of people in the LARP um, because mm -hmm. we really got to build out some of the stories that hadn't um, originally been built out because than it it was at the time, you know. Um, so we got to fill out some of the the stories in there, and I got to make my own mechanics, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Is it? I mean, I guess it's hard, but how is it like to be in yes, an RPG, but that there's no how to say it. you do have some rules, but people will interact as they want, but mm -hmm. you are not a GM. So you don't have like full control of the situation. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a lot of improvisation. It is for, so are you speaking specifically for LARP? Yeah. So LARP does have their rules, but yes, it is all improvisation. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And did you like that or pref you prefer be the oh, I, I loved it um, because it took my performance ability of being a dancer and a character performer with my love for TTRPGs and like having kind of the rule set and magical abilities and kind of mashed it all together. I loved it. Like just walking around in like, it's just like, imagine just walking around in the setting that you wanted to live in for a while, just sitting at a table. Like now you're actually like living, breathing character, interacting with other people and being able to use your powers. Like it's it's really fun. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Um, actually, they have a question about what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, it says, well, that's amazing. Oh, sorry. No, that was awesome. <laughs> Why were you a sword performer? Can you repeat it again? Why were you a sword performer? Oh, why was I a sword performer? Okay. Oh, um, fun question. So I was part of a masquerade ball called Labyrinth of Jareth a long time ago. And um, I was the choreographer and one of the lead um, performers in it. I choreographed uh, the show for about 10 years. And um, my character role like was kind of like, she was a warrior. 
um, brought down by the night sky. She was a star from the night sky that got brought down to become a warrior. And they asked me, they're like, hey, how comfortable do you feel like fighting? And I was like, I don't know, like I've never done it before. So they took me to a class and um, I started realizing that it was just like dancing. It was choreographed moves. Um, the words were very, very similar. In fact, to the point that I got really confused when somebody would tell me to coupe uh, with my sword. Um, coupe in French means uh, to cut. And in dance, you're doing that with your foot. So basically like foot, ankle, you would do that. But with your Ooh. sword, it means to go underneath. So okay. they would keep telling me to do that. And I was like, why would I put my foot behind my ankle? And they're like, no, it's your sword that goes around. And I was like, oh, got it. I understand now. Um, so I did sword fighting for about three years. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I, I loved it. Like I never did any, <laughs> actually, I take that back. I did do one movie as a stunt performer. It's a very low budget movie, but it was, it's on iTunes. <laughs> you see me get uh, beat up if you want. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, sword fighting. It was a good time. Wow. A lot of dedication. That's, that's amazing. And you have to learn so many things. Yeah. I did a lot of things in my lifetime. Yeah. 37 years of living. And I, there's a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> you look younger. Thank you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, we have a question that I, I think it's very important, and I I no, I do want great. to ask that as well. Um, for you, has playing in TTRPGs ever started to feel more like work and less than something you love? Um, no, because I never let it get to that point. I could recognize when it would start to become that, and I would pull away. Um, and I would focus mm -hmm. on my on my work. And so I like that's another thing, I guess, to distinguish between me and perhaps other TTRPGers who make it their career, which is totally cool, that it's not my career. My career is being an engineer and I still get to have my love for TTRPG. So um, it never got to feel like work. And when I started to recognize that it would, I would pull back and make sure that it, I kept it as my hobby. And you've never considered it to be your career? No, at some point, no, nope. mm -mm. nope, not at all. Um, I I think it's fruitful for people who have the hustle and the drive to continuously pursue the opportunities. Um, I'm not that person. That's why I didn't make it as a dancer. Um, <laughs> I am very happy with having a sustainable job, um, a reliable and dependable job. Um, but I think it's incredible that the people who do make it their career, that they're such go-getters and are thirsty for the opportunities to continue and fight for um, their work. Just wasn't me. Yeah, make, makes sense. And I, I really like your answer because we as, as uh, regular players, not RPG stars, <laughs> we sometimes, and they've mentioned it on the chat now and before in other interviews, we sometimes like dream about oh, I would like to do this for a living. And mm -hmm. sometimes you don't stop to realize that if you do that at some point, it won't be as enjoyable because your life depends of it, mm -hmm. like not your little life. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and it's really hard to do it. Like, um, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a, I'm a money's person and coming from the US, like everything, especially in California, Los Angeles, it's very, very expensive. Um, so just understanding the finances itself and how much people yeah. get paid an episode or not get paid an episode. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I can't afford to not get paid for, um, an episode if I didn't have the job that I have, you know, like that wouldn't, it wouldn't be feasible. You could, you, for me, I wouldn't be able to live on that. Um, so living wages comes first, living comfortably for me comes first. And then everything else that is a passion and hobby comes second. Yeah, I agree. They are mentioning on the chat that that differentiation is really mature mm -hmm. and it's something for, for everyone to think about. And also yeah. that we completely understand what you're saying. You do have to take care of you and, and how you live before anything else. Yeah, but more power, yeah, more power to you. If you want to pursue that as your career, like more power to you. I just, as a dancer, I saw it. It's hard. <laughs> um, and since the TTRPG community is even smaller than the dance community, I just like, yeah. whoo! It is hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me just one second. I'm not sure if here we have a question. Oh, okay. No, they were asking. I'm sorry. They were answering about their experiences with, with LARP. All right. Uh, so 
you mentioned the Power Rangers, and we got a little bit of a spoiler. Yay! <laughs> Do you have other projects that you are going to work on? Um, well, kind of going back previously, I am taking a break from um, from streaming. Um, I have some medical things that I'm going to be dealing with in the next year. Um, so I'm taking a step back. Um, mm -hmm. But the Power Ranger one was something that I've always wanted to do mm -hmm. literally since the book came out. Um, a little small, tiny little secret. If you read um, the source book, you may notice um, a character name by the name of Cynthia Corazon. Uh, it's based off of me. Uh, yeah, uh, one of my friends uh, uh, was a writer on it, and he kind of gave me a shout out because I like schooled him in Power Rangers. Um, <laughs> so when I had the opportunity, I was told that the Power Rangers show was going to happen. I really, really wanted to be a part of it. Um, and when all my medical stuff kind of started coming up, um, I kind of told them that I might not be able to do it. And they are so gracious and kind that they were like, no, no, we want you in it. We will work around your schedule. Um, so that being said, that's probably gonna be the only one of the only shows I do for right now for for a little while while I get the the medical stuff um, taken care of. Um, and at some point, I will talk about it um, publicly. But right now, while I'm going through it, I'm going to just kind of keep it to myself. Um, sure. But yeah, so I won't be in too, too much, but when I do come up and stuff, you guys will be the first to know on my social media. You guys can find out there. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, they are mentioning on the chat and also on our side, we hope everything goes well and no additional questions. We do hope everything goes well. Yeah. Um, give me just one second. I forgot a message. Uh, so the subtitles are not working right now. Oh no. Yeah, so um, let's have, let me see if, if it can be done real quick. Da -da -da. All right, well, I guess we can add them later for, for the YouTube video, something like that. Um, hopefully they can, our stream master can work on it right now. Um, <laughs> also they are mentioning that the, it's very sweet from your friend to add you. I yeah, it is. I agree. That's amazing. Like to have that uh, recognition of of the effort. So this person didn't know Power Rangers, and you helped them for the for the writing. Am I understanding yeah. correctly? Yes. Yeah. They know a little bit about it, but I was like, okay, we're gonna sit down for an evening, and <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna show you different episodes of why they were important in each of the seasons to get him um, at least to Lo Lost Galaxy. So, yeah, taught him about <laughs> Goldar, told him about Rita, and why Rita was in love with Zed, and Zed didn't like her, and he was going to take <laughs> over, and like it's why the Power Rangers lost yeah. crystals. Yeah, <laughs> can't tell. I'm a big Power Ranger nerd. Yeah, I can tell that you do like it. It's um, I'm not sure how is it there. Well, in the states, but I I do know that here in Latin America, Power Rangers are big, like for everyone. It doesn't matter, like where are you from or or your age. Yeah. you have to to know them. <laughs> Good. So this game will be amazing, especially with you, uh, with the name and everything representing Latin America in the game. I I am seeing the future and it's going to be amazing that's going to be very famous that character of yours yeah. oh thanks <laughs> I'm, I'm excited um but yo like it, it's all because of you guys like everybody being uh our community being fans of ttrpg that's how we get represented and being loud um like my favorite singer dancer perfume maker whatever jennifer lopez like she always says that right like let's get loud like there's a reason why we say that because Hispanics, we tend to, at least I've seen that we we stay in the background and we stay quiet because that's what we were told in the past was the best way to, you know, to survive, right? But not now. No, we say we get loud. We get loud on the atrocities of things that happen to us and we get loud when we're not represented so that we can make a difference for the generations behind us. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Definitely staying quiet is a way to protect yourself, but you won't be ever able to go out of that context if you don't mm -hmm. do something different so yeah i completely agree and choose your Let's battles out. not all yeah. battles not all battles <laughs> need to be fought choose your battles 
yeah, yeah, that is true. And that applies for both real life and RPG. Do not face the boss if you are not ready. Yep. Keep yourself safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, so you, I think I already asked this. Yeah, I already asked. Okay, never mind. So tell us. I know you mentioned uh, some of the, your favorite games, the like top five. Mm -hmm. What's the genre that you like the most? Oh. Genre, that's tough. It depends on my mood. Um, I like magic stuff. I like modern magic. So like Kids on Broomstick, um, Tales from the Flood, um, Vampire kind of falls in that where it's like that like modern magic, uh, changeling, um, living in your modern day world with fantasy elements. Kind of what I like. But I'm also okay. a sucker for cyberpunk, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's hard well i guess you can combine them a little bit yeah. <laughs> spicing with a little bit of magic yeah <laughs> we have another question in the chat um yeah. what game would you invite new people to the hobby like to start to start um kids on broom kids on broom okay. I think would probably be the best one is um the mechanics are very easy to pick up and understand. Um, like you get, I think you get your whole range of polyhedrals and depending on what stat is your highest, you roll that. So like if you're a charisma based character, you roll a D20 for your charisma. If your lowest stat is intelligence, you roll a, um, a D4 for your intelligence. So it's super easy to comprehend what what you're supposed to roll versus like you know D D or even vampire for that matter where you have to like combine like your dice pools and like <laughs> add it all together and then like a plus five to this if you have this and um to me D D is difficult to get in as a beginner but i mean hey i i, I launched into changeling as my first game so i went in like very deep um, <laughs> but i would i would say kids on brooms or uh tales from the flood slash Oh my gosh. So Tales from the Flood is the second book in a series. I think something from the loop is the first one. And then Tales from the Flood is the second one. Oh, I think it's the same Tales from the Loop. Is it Tales from the Loop and Tales from the mm -hmm. Flood? Or so something to that effect. That that story is also and the mechanics are very easy as well. So I would recommend those as starters. Okay. Would you, if you had the chance, would you like to change how you started? Like nah. to start with <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> I I um I tend to when I do things I go real hard or I don't do it at all. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I I love where I started. It made it easier to understand other games later on. Yeah, well that that is true. If you start with the hard ones, then the easy. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of hard things, um, not so much of uh, the streamed games but which has been the hardest character to play to interpret that's a good question hardest character i've had to play um i'll be honest with you uh the hardest characters i'll say plural that i've had to play is when i come in as npc existing games Okay. Um, and especially NPCs that are linked to other people's backstories, because you, I want to make sure that I do it justice to the story, to what the storyteller wants, but also feel like the character that I'm tied to, because it's part of their backstory, feels involved and vindicated or whatever they need to feel in that moment. So I've played, um, for example, I've played a prince for New Orleans in a vampire game where she was kind of like this Marilyn Monroe type look. And um, later find out that she is the, um, she's a Bahari priestess and two of the PCs were uh, becoming Bahari. And so they've had this whole story arc of working on becoming Bahari. So it was my task to be the priestess to invite them into the world of Bahari and make it feel magical. Like the thing that they worked so hard for all season to come meet the priestess and I was that priestess like making wow. sure that they got the magic that they were feeling all all season long so that to me is challenging because 
how do you play a like a vampire who's supposed to be intimidating, brooding, ever so slightly predatorial, but still warm and inviting mm-hmm. coming in and like making sure that that person feels good. Um, so the same thing with like my LARP NPCs, like there's that fine balance of being the big bad um, and being scary and imposing, but also making sure that people get that cool ending um, that they feel vindicated. So like one time in LARP, I played a, um, a like one of the seven deadly sins, like um, demon characters. And I had very high stats. I had like over like a thousand hit points. Um, So I had like the whole town trying to like just hit me. And I had all these different powers and I was like moving people out of the way. And I started recognizing that people were not necessarily like losing interest in the fight um, because there was a lot of fight happening. Um, But I had a lot of hit points and I was like, there's no way these people are going to ever like knock me down. But like, I still wanted to give somebody like a really cool ending. So I found a person who was playing what's called a celestial so an angel character who was hitting me a whole bunch and so i just i was also getting tired too so <laughs> um so i just like you know cinematically like dropped to like my knees and like he like came over and like ripped my character's heart out and i did this like large scream of like oh i won't get you for this and then like left And so like, but that person now has this like magical moment of like, I killed a demon. Like this is the best weekend ever. Um, Yeah, like those kind of roles are challenging for me because I like want to make sure that everybody has like good experiences, but still bring bring the things that they need for the characters. So never my PCs were hard to play. Playing the NPCs is hard. (laughs) The short answer. Yeah, I I mean, I can imagine. I've never done that, but I can imagine, especially when it's like a goal, like the the priestess you said. Yeah, because you have to like meet the expectation of how I don't know how many games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Um. Question: Did you ever imagine you would get to be? I mean, I know you mentioned that you don't feel so famous, but you are. <laughs> Did you ever <laughs> imagine you would get to that point to be like a? rpg celebrity <laughs> nope i never knew that those two words would ever be in a sentence together <laughs> <laughs> um let alone me being it honestly i always thought that I, if i was ever going to be famous it would be because i was a dancer not because i was a ttrpg player <laughs> being a nerd <laughs> uh, but i welcome it i'm humbled and honored that you guys hold me to such esteem and i hope that i continue to do so for you guys yeah, we, we also hope you keep playing because we really like it. As long as you enjoy it. I fully enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been to Latin America any place? Um, when I was a little girl, I went to Encinitas. Okay. Um, and then as an adult, I went to Puerto Rico. And that's about it. Okay. And have you ever come here to something related to RPG? No. Like a convention, something like that? No. I don't do a lot of traveling. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And how many or I guess you go to conventions. Mm-hmm. I've seen some pictures. <laughs> Comic-Con. Comic-Con, WonderCon, the ones in LA, those are the ones I, I definitely visit. And back when I was younger, I used to go to Dragon Con over on the East Coast in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was pretty much the extent of my con circuits. And when you go, I guess, like, a lot of people recognize you. Oh, oh what? Is it? No? It's not like that? No, 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 <gasps> people don't recognize me. No. Really? Yeah. Oh, that that is weird. I, I would assume that people would be like, oh, it's July from LA by night. Nope. I guess your character, oh. if you go in, in cosplay or something? Um, Sometimes I'll cosplay, but... The- I will say, so my cons have been before I played in Alley by Night, so no one ever recognized me then. Um, mm-hmm. The convention that I have gone to after LA by Night, I was recognized once, but it was during the pandemic, so I had like my mask on. So mm-hmm. again, probably hard to find who I am, but I was only recognized like one time. <laughs> I blend in. I'm really good. See, I told you, I'm, I'm part La Sombra. I can blend in like real well. And people won't, like, won't find me. <laughs> you are in real life. <laughs> well, that that's something that really I find it weird because I I would 
Yeah, again, I wouldn't mention something else, but yeah, it makes <laughs> sense what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, maybe they recognize me and they're scared to come up to me. Like I had that. So we were, we did a live event at WonderCon for LA by night. And when we came out to go meet everybody, like I was standing with my sister and I'm wearing huge heels. So I'm already pretty tall. I'm five, six and in heels, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm about five, ten, five, eleven in high heels. Uh, and I noticed that like all the other actor uh, performers all had other like people around them, like talking to them about the characters. And I was the only one that didn't like, no one was really talking to me. And I looked at my sister, I was like, does nobody like me? Like <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> and so I find out that people were just intimidated uh, by me because I, I was pretty or I was tall or a combination of both. I don't know, like, <laughs> but I did recognize that. I was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll be over here in a corner. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> not that you mentioned that that is a uh, big chance. I would imagine I would be intimidated as well. I mean, I would of no. course go because it's so exciting, <laughs> but yeah, that's something that I didn't consider. Um, well, if people ever see me in public, please come say hi. I'm just as like anxious and nervous wreck as you guys are. So <laughs> just come say hi. Speaking of, um, well, the, it's something that they've mentioned in the chat several times. And I, we are aware that you mentioned you don't feel that um, confident in Spanish, mm -hmm. but you, would you be willing to play a, uh, maybe a campaign or a one shot maybe in Spanish. Talk about driving up my anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> in an ideal world, I would I would love to. I honestly am like paralyzed to speak Spanish. Like I think if I did it privately with people and try, I probably would um, not live stream yet. I don't feel comfortable okay. enough to hold a conversation in Spanish. I can <laughs> understand, like I talk to my grandmother and I can understand what she's saying, but I can't speak it back. Oh yeah, uh, okay. That makes sense. I, I don't know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> you should try. I can have, I can have a, like a Google Translate and be like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you should try it. At, of course, you know, like with your friends or something like that. Yeah. Uh, we've had, Mara had a, and me, we've, we've played for about a year with a friend from New York. Yeah, you're from New yeah. York. And back then, Mara didn't have like a, a that confidence that you're mentioning with English. Yeah. Yeah. And we played for a year in English with, with him. He spoke some Spanish. So we sometimes made like the switch. But uh -huh. it was very helpful. Uh, well, then I guess we're playing for a year in Spanish so I can start <laughs> playing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good to do <laughs> this practice. You just okay. don't make the same mistake as I do because I <laughs> I have the great idea to <laughs> being a bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't do that. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta no. you just speak all no. If I was gonna do it in Spanish, I would play a monk because they don't speak as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't play a social character yet. <laughs> <clears throat> um Wes is asking, what is wait, uh, what is your favorite season from all that you've played? What is my favorite system of all that I have played? Season. Oh, season. Yes. Season. <laughs> In LA by night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's a hard one. They were all quite good. Season five was a lot of fun. Um season one was a lot of fun too. Yeah, I'm gonna go with season one or season five. That's my favorite LA by night seasons. One, because it was like the brand new character. You get to really, really, really see it like develop into what, mm -hmm. you know, you guys kind of recognize her as. And there was a lot of like trying to figure her out myself. And then season five, because everything kind of just came out ahead. Um, and I really loved, I really loved my ending with Nellie. I was actually uh, re-watching the last episode of season five. Um and was reading some of the comments that people were saying about Nellie. And I was just like, you guys did not understand Nellie if this is the comment you're making. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the end, I was very satisfied where I left her. Um, and she has a lot more story to give should we get afforded the opportunity to play again. Um, 
I'm just really satisfied with all of her endings and all of the choices that I ended up um, making for for Nelly. So yeah, season five was a good one. Okay, well, we have to watch them all over so we can recognize why they are the favorites. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, there's a question um, that relates to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Have you ever regretted the way a story of one of your characters ended? Have I ever regretted? Mm. No. No, I don't think I'd necessarily regret it. I think it would be more like lessons learned. Like, okay, like maybe I could play that differently, but I wouldn't necessarily regret any of the decisions I made as a player um, because I'm making those decisions. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously the obvious regrettable ones would be like, I'm going to go do the thing. And the storyteller's like, and you walk into a giant trap. Well, crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but in terms of character like development, any of the decisions I've ever made, I've never really regretted them. Um, I'm also not the type of person to regret decisions in my own life that I've made either. So, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, that's great. Right. Right. So far, well, with a lot of people that I spoke with, they usually regret like, oh, I wish my character would have ended different. But yeah, it's it's good that you haven't. Yeah. No. I no regrets. Mm -mm. They, I enjoyed every one of them I've played so <laughs> that's good that's amazing yeah. it's really good um they are I'm sorry I I got lost in the chat and I didn't see this question when we were talking about conventions and all that they <laughs> want to know if there's someone around our side of the world would you come um I think it would have to depend on where and when makes sense all right. So, guys, if you're planning to make one, you have to give her some time. Yeah. <laughs> or come to the U.S., come to California. Or we can go and, yeah, look for you. <laughs> Another option, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got lost in the chat. I, I okay? do know that we have one more question here that I didn't read, but they are so excited. I don't know. Wow. Oh, my God. You're amazing. <laughs> and I, I agree I agree I, I do like how you like your view on RPG your, thank you how you make it part of your life and at the same time you take some distance that's something uh, hard to do in general and yeah. especially with RPG because you are the character you are mm -hmm. leaving that whatever story is going on yep. and putting that distance it's important and hard <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you guys want any tips on it, I, and you understand English, um, I do have a podcast life action role play that we discuss oh. these sort of um, tips and tricks of the trade. It's uh, specifically not specific to LARP. We talk a lot about our LARP experiences because that's originally how the podcast started, but mm -hmm. it's about role play in general. You get to hear stuff and I do drop some LA by night stuff in there too. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's <laughs> Yeah, that I will listen to that because it, it is really, really important to do that and to learn yeah. that. And of course, from your experience, because you don't only play, you play and you are uh, publicly playing, streaming what you're yeah. doing. Yep. All right. Well, besides a lot of insistence of playing in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you were going you to... You have to do it sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to ask... Uh, how does it feel to play in, I mean, I, I play uh, in string sometimes, uh, but uh, how does it feel, uh, make it as a show? Uh, I mean, like the kind of show that you uh, make for LA by night. Mm -hmm. uh, is there sometimes that you feel like um, embarrassing your character or feel uncomfortable because you 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 know to is it's it's a camera in front of you or how how is it um let's see here so uh, i have been a performer all of my life um being in front of a camera i've never been camera shy before um Makes sense. I will say when we play LA by night, when I've played New York by night or just played in the studios, period, it doesn't feel like that there's a camera like in your face, like focusing on you. Like it really, they do a good job of making the set feel like you're still playing 
at a table with people. So like Jason is in front of us when we're playing um, our, um, probably can't tell from the way it's shot, but um, the tables are usually kind of like in a diagonal. So like kind of a V form and then Jason's in the middle. So you're able to look in the direction of of people. mm -hmm. And then the cameras um, are opposite, right? So like my camera would be, like if I'm sitting on this table here, my camera would be over here and then vice versa, the camera would be. Okay. um, So the cameras are there, you see a whole bunch of cables, but it's not like there is a camera sitting in your face. The only thing that's awkward is sometimes a mic will be like in the way when you're trying to like either use your hands or like roll a dice and then you hear the like clunk (laughs) by accident. (laughs) It's it's not not intentional. And so we started really recognizing where the mics are. And I know Alex Ward did this a lot, but he would like put his hands in front of the mic and like start squeezing the, um, his leather gloves to do like ASMR for folks. Mm-hmm. So then we started getting wise and like doing things. Like I start like tapping my nails, like near the <laughs> the mic. <laughs> but yeah, no, it always just felt like it was, um, that it was a home game. So it never really got embarrassed to, to do things. Was I scared? Yeah. Oh my God. I like had anxiety every time I was about mm-hmm. to go on LA by night. Like there was one time my anxiety was so bad. I was, um, in the bathroom, like on my knees, like praying to the porcelain gods, <laughs> Um, and actually the reason why I started, um, wearing the sunglasses as a uh, Nelly, as well as the gloves was because I was hiding the fact that I had, um, anxiety, um, at the very beginning. So I'd wear the dark sunglasses so I can kind of like shield myself and like not think oh. about, um, being live or anything like that. And then I would wear nausea bracelets. So that's why I started wearing the gloves, um, was to hide the nausea bracelets underneath. Okay. All right. And um, I'm sorry, can, can you give us again the name of the podcast? Yeah. Life Action Role Play. Oh, okay. Perfect. There you go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I've really enjoyed this interview. I hope you did too. Um, yes. I really hope this is a way for your Latin American fans to know you and, and recognize you as a representative that you, that you actually are. Um, and again, thank you so much for accepting. Before I can, <laughs> before I can uh, go to like final announcements and everything, we usually want to or give some time for whoever is the guest to announce whatever activities they have next. Sure. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be RPG related necessarily. Yeah. Whatever you want to share with us. Yeah. Um, well, so as you guys know, my name is Cynthia Marie. Um, I play a lot of different games all over the place. Um, this year, I'm kind of taking a step back, so I don't have too many um, new projects, but I will be playing um, Power Rangers on the Initiative Order. So twitch.tv slash the Initiative Order. That'll be starting okay. in April. Um, and it'll be like kind of like an every other week thing. So you can either just stay tuned to my social medias or um, subscribe to them because they are an incredible channel and have a wonderful Discord community. And sometimes you see me pop up in the Discord community. Um, but shout out to them because they're amazing. Um, otherwise, um, catch up on the LA by Night. Um, one through five uh, seasons are on YouTube, I believe. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I'm on the second season of New York by Night. I play Coco. She is a Puerto Rican La Sombra from the Bronx. So check her out. Well, was she from the Bronx? Her family was there, but she moved to Manhattan. So she's more of a Manhattan girl. But <laughs> check her out. A um, lot of fun. Very opposite from Nelly. Um, so hopefully you like her. Uh, very Latina. Um, otherwise, I have a bunch of other shows. I have my podcast, Life Action Role Play, like I said. Um, yeah. And I'm actually working on another project. I will stay quiet about because it might take me some time to get there, but um, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for accepting. And speaking of following and staying like alert of your announcements, is it best to do it through Instagram, Twitter, which would be like the main? Oh, yeah. So Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Twitter, my handle is Sindancer. So like my name, C-Y-N and then Dancer because that's what I love to do. (laughs) <laughs> um, and that's my handle for pretty much every other platform except for Instagram because somebody took Sin Dancer. <laughs> uh, in which case on Instagram, it's Cynthia underscore underscore Marie. So two okay. underscores. Yeah. Um, and you guys have already tagged me in some of your um, your promo stuff. So you can just follow yeah. the tag and come hit me up over there. Um, I'm usually pretty open and on the comments as much as I can be. Yeah. That is true. Me. 
<laughs> that is true. She is. You are. And again, uh, thank you so much for accepting. I've yes. enjoyed so thank much you. knowing yeah. you and also knowing someone that it's passionate about the performance RPG. It's famous and uh, RPG star, but at the same time, uh, regular nerd like us. <laughs> it feels refreshing. It is. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> nerd united. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And also, I I personally feel inspired because uh, sometimes it's difficult to um, feel close with w because we don't have the Latin American representation. Yeah. Uh, so I think that you um, unify that part of the uh, of the South America and North America, and I feel really really honored about about it. Thanks, thanks a lot for that. Thank you, thank you. Remember, guys, stay loud, stay loud. That's the only way we're gonna keep our community uh, being shown and represented. Yeah, yes, that is true. And, that is true. And of course, we have to <laughs> make it possible that a uh, kettle sword, please. <laughs> yes, kettle, kettle sword. Yes, I will totally do it. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for accepting the invitation. It's been very enjoyable, such an honor. Everyone in the chat has been very hyped about having you here. And here, here, <laughs> here on the on the channel, we have a way to thank our guests for coming. Uh, it's a symbolic thank you. It's an acknowledgement that people will be able to see right about now in the in the stream. I will send it to you if you want. I can send it through email so it keeps like the um, quality. <laughs> And yeah, so it's just, again, a way to say thank you for coming. We really appreciate that you accepted the invitation. Yeah. Anytime. I hope I come back soon and we can talk some more stuff. And we are we living can... the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we can play a little. Like we a, can play a, a little. <laughs> oh, in Spanish. In Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm we, here for it. We make a mix. And so we are all comfortable, both Spanish and English. And... I'm here for it. You let me know. Yay, perfect. Oh, <laughs> yay. So uh, before I, I can close, and again, thank you so much for coming. I'll jump real quick to some announcements for this week. Mara, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So for this week, we have on Friday, eternally at seven, nine, at nine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at nine, nine Eastern. Eastern. We have on Saturday, interview with Mara. From Oif. Orden y de, orden y de fulgurante. Thank you. And on Saturday, you are narrating, right? Yeah, I, I will be narrated uh, post domini again. Uh, our uh, propuesta, our proposal. Proposal, thanks. Uh, for a RP, zombies RPG. So, Cynthia, of course, you will have our. A, a, co a copy if you want to play something uh, and yeah I will be narrated that all right so don't miss Mara with her another one shot like the one just from yesterday another group another survival or maybe not and then on Sunday I believe on Sunday we also have a game this one is from the Sumbra it's her one shot of Anatema and the one English, yeah. the one from Maris in Spanish, and at them in English on Sunday. And then stay tuned to our social media so we can share the schedules and everything from our next one shots of um, Ladies DMs March. Yeah. <laughs> it's our Ladies DMs March or G GMs, actually. <laughs> yeah, GMs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for, for accepting the invitation, for staying yeah. here. Coolest, thank you so much for watching. All your questions was very interesting. Anything you can reach out to her. She is very, very uh, what's the word? She replies and, and she's accessible. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Have a great day and make your checks be always critical. <laughs>